you're doing you're building an EEG to yep. look at alpha rhythm and yep. to correlate it with with emotional state or with arousal or whatever you want to say with with attentional stuff and you have how many electrodes on your head right now so we have three electrodes and one reference, and a one reference electrode on the ear uh-huh and one for eye blinking uh -huh. and one at the back for, to be able to observe the alpha waves and one at the top uh-huh so when we when i relax the alpha wave amplitude increases and uh -huh. when i get excited which in this case it's uh, watching uh, the X-Men trailer. <laughs> it's going to be on May 23rd, <laughs> so, which makes me exciting. And then, then alpha wave amplitude decreases, and we were successfully observed this change. Okay. And also we used the eye blinking to be able to control the devices. In this case, we just enabled the button or disabled it, but in the future, just by um, eye blinking consecutively a couple times, we can change the state of the device, which okay. could be useful. And this is this is the uh, the home built uh, EEG, yeah. and and it's isolated because it's running to your laptop, yeah. and so there's no there's no connection to Earth ground. Yeah. And so the uh, so you didn't have to have isolator you didn't have to have isolating amplifiers or anything. There's a lot of circuitry there. Yeah, this is for eight electrodes. Right now we're only running the top three because uh -huh. uh, we've only hooked up three, but we designed the hardware to include up to eight. I see. So you could expand this yeah. even more if you yeah. if you wanted to. Okay, so let me see it in action here. So you power up by plugging in the batteries, and now you're starting a MATLAB script over there? Yep. And there's the, there's the data. Yeah, okay, so the black signal is the one located uh, right above the eye. Um, okay. You can see the motion artifact for the blinking right there. Oh yeah, very, very large motion yeah. artifact for the blink. Um, okay. The blue one is uh, located uh, right above that over there, and then the red one is at the back uh, for the occipital lobe where the alpha waves originate. Uh huh. And I'm seeing some rhythmic activity yeah. on the on the back electrode there. Yeah. So right now, what we're doing in the code is we're we're calculating the maximum peak for the occipit uh, electrode at the occipital lobe, which is in the alpha range, and then we're taking the ratio of that with the in the RMS of the whole uh, Fourier spectrum and, and plotting that over time. Okay, so you're getting some some index of alpha-ness. Yeah. Okay. And then we're gonna hopefully with our experiment observe how it changes when he's watching the video and when he's just relaxing. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah let's 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 okay. let's do it here. So I'm just gonna restart the whole thing so we can just okay. get it. And you're restarting it to get it. I see. So, okay. yeah, just for you know, so that I have an idea of when he started doing what, so we can just okay. look at a time scale and see how it changed. Or so you're starting it there, and here's the trailer it. starting up. And so I don't know whether I should be. So, so. The alpha amplitude seems to be down now, and mm -hmm. is that true by the index? Yeah. And the and there's quite a lot of action <coughs> going on. Why don't you pause it for a minute there? All right. So let's see what happens after we pause it. Well, I say the alpha content is going up visually. What's the index say? Yeah, um, we can stop it and then we can plot the entire thing and see okay. if it turned over. Okay, all right, go turn it back on again now then. Heavy action there. I mean, I mean, but we were able to do it with the bomb. That was, and I 
Okay, so that's the end of the. Oh no, it's not the end. Okay. Alright, so you can pause it. Yeah. You can just. Maybe plug it. Uh, sure. So, what you can do now is if you So, so that's the yeah. This is the overall change. So I mean, of how it's changed, and then we can try to fit it. So there was something, something fairly yeah. dramatic happened right yeah. there, and I'll, and that's probably where I paused yeah. it in the center there. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I think this is the last part that yeah. I started checking. I guess. Uh -huh. Yeah. So then it starts trickling back down, and um, we actually have a couple of images where we uh, even did this to music. Uh -huh. So, uh, I don't know where you saved them. <laughs> Final project I'm report. Using some music that stimulates the alpha waves of the brain directly. So, also that was helping to get excited. Or mm -hmm. And so this is and so yeah. this is a plot of when the music was playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it started off uh, as the music like uh, started and it started increasing, and then we turned the music off around here, and then it started decreasing again. All right, so if you if you do some averaging stuff on yeah. there, you you fitted some sort of yeah, fitted, quadratic yeah, to that. Yeah, quadratic to that. Yeah. I see that in the background yeah. there, and there and there is a significant curvature. It looks like. Yeah. Interesting. And also for eye blinking, I can show that map. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's see the eye blinking. So the eye blinking is a big signal. Yeah, it yeah, is. It is big. It's huge. Actually, one really interesting thing is that we, we also get a lot of artifact if he's just sitting down and moving his feet on the electrode that's placed here. It's just pretty interesting. We need to try to look into that. <laughs> you know, that could be static, too. That could be that your foot is acting as a static electricity generator against the floor. All right. So it may be that it's that it's a an electrical artifact as opposed to a, even a motion artifact. I'm not sure. Yeah, we also have So, I know these, this is just him blinking. Okay, so you, you you've got clear yeah. isolation of the blink there. Yeah. So you're doing some sort of first derivative yeah. or something. Yeah, we're doing a derivative square, and uh, for detecting the peak, we're in the background. We're uh, taking the derivative, squaring it, and then thresholding it. So it's like Pan Tompkins. Yeah, yeah. kind of like that, uh -huh. without the running average. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now I'm going to drop the threshold. That we start detecting peaks. Uh huh. And now, once he starts blinking a little faster, it'll turn on oh. when he has a quick success. I see. I saw that. It yeah. turned green over yeah. there. Yeah. Let's try that again. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, and then we wait a certain amount of time so that it can stay on and then we can trigger it off again. Mm -hmm. So we've said that. Uh huh. Yeah, so this is just a. So you have, you have control. You have control by blinking. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, this is just a sort of. Thing that we came up with. <laughs> no, that's cool. That's that's very cool because that that shows uh, the control in principle exactly. by a exactly. There are some research groups that they control the wheelchairs by just tongue motion. Mm -hmm. So this is another way to do that. I guess. It's another way to do it. Right? Just six eye blinkings, maybe stop the vehicle, and three mm -hmm. starts, mm -hmm. maybe four turn right. Or you know you could just place two electrodes here, turn right, turn left. Turn right, turn left, depending on which eye you blink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cool.